my talk is on uh, the cooling, snowy winters that nobody talks about. Uh, in terms of certainties, as just mentioned, if you start with certainty, you end in doubts. And if you start with doubts, you'll end in certainties. It's a Francis Bacon, and I'm, that's right. Uh, this is the US temperature for the last, in winter, for the last 20 years. It's trended down 2.26 degrees Fahrenheit. This is true in all nine climate regions. There's a downtrend. It's also true for 20 years in the central England temperature record. Not as much, four tenths of a degree, but it's down even with a warm winter last year. Everybody remembers December 2010 in, in the central England, which had the second coldest December since 1659 in the Little Ice Age. Still cold, colder winters ahead. Uh, Joe mentioned it last night. Um, the cold PDO uh, has been favoring more La Ninas, and it's responsible for this holding the temperature at bay. The warm AMO, which we'll show you, favors blocking, which make winters cold in Eurasia and North America. And when it turns cold in 2020, it'll favor a more general cold like the 60s and 70s. And the solar is entering, entering a minimum, maybe like the Dalton, maybe like uh, an earlier, the Maunder minimum, that would accelerate the cooling. We do get a contribution uh, from high latitude volcanoes. We had a whole bunch from 2007, 2010. Last winter, the driver was in the Pacific. You see that warm pool in the Gulf of Alaska? Uh, this guy, Jerome Namias, was one of my mentors. He was the first long range forecaster in national, the US Weather Bureau back in the 50s, he, later at Scripps. He talked about a warm pool in the central Pacific in the early 70s that migrated into the Gulf of Alaska and produced the cold late 70s. But Joe and I also noticed that a very cold winter, actually 1916 and 17, 1718, had a similar kind of warm pool drift into the Gulf of Alaska. And it had, uh, like last year, some cold water in the, uh, in the uh, uh, equatorial Pacific. And it was a very cold winter in 1917-18, one of the coldest, especially in the central. Well, this led Joe last summer to uh, predict that we were going to have a cold winter when CPC was going for a warm winter. And uh, we both went all through the, uh, the fall with that forecast, and this was my Thanksgiving forecast from my air clients on weather belt, the fickle finger of fate. And this was what happened December to January. Uh, December to February. If you include March, this Chicago had the coldest December to March on record since 1872. Detroit had its snowiest winter since 1880. All these cities were in the top five coldest ever. Now, we're going to touch on snow for a little bit. Bring me back to my state, New Hampshire. The Union of Concerned Scientists, the university, had a Mount Washington summit back in 2007 for state government and industry promising a dire future for the winter sports and maple sugar industry due to warming. Well, God had a sense of humor. All across North America, 2007 and 8 was the snowiest uh, winter, set records from Alaska to the west and parts of New England, and the head of the Ski Area Association said that this could be a record year for snow. Whoops, uh, look at these snow amounts, incredible snowfall. And in, in New England, caribou set an all-time record. Uh, Concord tied a record set back in the 1870s for seasonal snow, 120 inches. And this was, uh, Rick Worm is here, this was his uh, mailbox in New Hampshire and near Concord that winter. This led to cartoons, and if you can't read that on the top, it says, we've got to work on our timing. Well, this didn't stop Michael Oppenheimer at Princeton or RFK Jr. in Washington from saying uh, they lamented the lack of snow, that children would never be able to ski or, or sled in 2008, and then 
2009 and 10 came Snowmageddon in the Mid-Atlantic. And they set all-time records in Philadelphia and Washington, Baltimore, Atlantic City for snowfall. In New York City, they came in late that year. December had their snowiest month, and they wound up 14th snowiest in their history. Next year started early in January. It was the second snowiest month in their history. They ended up third snowiest. And uh, le last year, we were making a run at that, and then it stopped snowing in March. We just came up for... 0.5 inches short. Now, one of the claims is that snow is disappearing and will disappear first in the major cities. But Nisus, uh, NOAA has a Nisus scale and uh, high impact East Coast snowstorms affecting the population. We're four years into the 2010s. We've had 12 high impact storms that beats out the record of 10 set in the 1960s and 2000. Okay. And this was my driveway in 2010. That's my wife behind the uh, in that snowplow room. Perhaps you can see her there. Uh, the Northern Hemisphere winters, uh, four of the top five snowiest winters have occurred since 2007 and 8. And some people had have had enough. <laughs> and Russia, this is Russia. Uh, my, I knew my car was in there somewhere in my chalet. And this, uh, he's, he, he has a bottle ready for when he's finished uh, his, his snow clearing job. This is uh, China. This is Jerusalem. <laughs> Snow is a thing of the past. All right. The, the PDO and AMO were mentioned. Uh, we're now in a negative uh, PDO, which has helped st st stop the uh, temperatures from rising, but a positive AMO, which has caused the Arctic melting and also uh, is, is uh, producing more uh, high-level latitude blocking, making winters colder. When it turns cold, the AMO, uh, after 2020, then the Arctic ice should return and the hemisphere should cool. The accelerate, temperature should accelerate. The PDO is also already turning negative. Uh, we get high latitude blocking. Uh, you you uh, wind up with high pressure in high latitudes. It deflects cold air. You get the polar vortex over North America and Siberian air into Europe. And that happened a lot in the late 2000s. And you can see how the, AM, uh, the uh, AMO plays a role in that. When in the early 60s, when it was warm in the Atlantic, the uh, NAO and AO were negative. When it uh, cycled to cold by the 80s, very positive. Then there's the sun. We talked about that in the last section. Even the BBC noticed the sun has gone to sleep, and you can see the last three cycles. Cycle 22, cycle 23 is down 25%, and sunspot number down another 45% in cycle 24. We're coming off the max. And uh, that was expected because of the longer term 200-year cycle. Uh, there's also a 106-year uh, cycle, so early part of of the 1900s were IC2. And uh, so we, we're matching cycle number five uh, in the early eight, uh, 1798, 1800, uh, very nicely. And then that's in, in purple. The uh, blue is the current cycle. And the one in the early 1900s is in the yellow. That's uh, Svalgard's favorite, but uh, it, was, it was a quiet cycle, but not quite as, as much as the, uh, the Dalton minimum. In 1911, uh, the Niagara Falls froze, and it froze twice this winter. And the ice on the Great Lakes set a record. This is the weekly ice cover. The blue green line is the normal. It was above the normal in every week for the whole winter, reaching, reaching a record of 92.5%, uh, uh, and allowing people to walk to the ice caves on Lake Superior. And of course, when it's melting, the water levels are higher. The Dalton minimum was a time of a lot of snow. And Dickens wrote about uh, the children playing in the snow. And certainly, that's been the case in recent years. Now, the total solar effect, and one of the reasons the IPCC is so wrong, is that they've, that I do, the, they only consider the uh, total solar irradiance, the, brightness, the visible, where there, there are these other amplifiers that was talked about in the last section. Uh, 
the lower solar flux when you get uh, into the quiet solar uh, periods like that's upcoming means lower ultraviolet by six or eight percent, uh, which means uh, uh, less ozone production in low latitudes and an expansion of the polar vortex. Uh, cosmic rays mean more low clouds and higher albedo. A lower geomagnetic also means a negative NAO and AO. I could show you that if I had more time. And more amplified patterns all overall uh, mean uh, higher persistence. And if you've noticed something about our weather in the last several years, it's been a lot of persistence month to month. When you're in a cold winter, it stays cold. And uh, that's a characteristic of a quieter solar period. When you combine them all, and here I'm using the total solar radiance uh, as a proxy for the, the total solar effect, I superimposed it on, a, on the sum of the PDO and AMO and on the US HCN temperature. And you see, you think the oceans and the sun have something to do with temperatures? And the sun leads the way, and then the oceans follow, and then the land. Both ocean, uh, the uh, PDO has started down when the AMO uh, turns negative, that will accelerate down with the low sun, uh, temperatures should accelerate down. I can't promise you, I can't tell you what number, but it will be cooling. And I thank you.